We're here at the Pocono Raceway. Ah! We made it to the Poconos. I know, Janina. Yes. I'm more excited than anybody because, you know, I wanted to be a race car driver. Oh, God, that's scary. So this is like my dream come true. I know we're here today. We're going to interview some people. We're going to interview the president. We're going to interview someone from the American Red Cross because they're having a blood drive here today. Which, as you know, they do more than just have races here. But my all-time dream is to be able to get into one of the cars and do a couple laps. How about it? Well, you're definitely fit for racing. I am too. I mean, who wouldn't wear a glittery shirt to go to the racetrack? Right? Well, we have our Dale Earnhardt's hats on. Okay. I have a collector's hat, though. This is senior who passed. You have the junior, so I figure mother, daughter. Nice. And, uh, My mom you know, got they are the legends. They're the legends, so well, we're here. It's fun to be out here, and as you know, we're taking our show on the road as per your request this summer. So we've been doing some really crazy things, um, and I'm I'm excited about this show because I think we're going to be uh, safe today. I don't think we're going to take to the wheel. I don't think my life is at risk for this show. I don't think they'll allow us to. First of all, I think you have to be a qualified driver, but maybe we can get in the car and get our a couple of rounds. Be racing. Yeah. And if you watch the series of the girls, you know, we went to Aussies that one time. The little arcade. And we did that little race and they rigged my mom's car to beat me. No, they did it. And they did. Here comes my and car now. Look. They actually. There it is. Hello. They actually oh. got into an accident. We're not going to do that today. Those were go karts. This is the real deal. And I'm so excited. This is actually my first time ever here. I never covered the race, which is shocking. Oh, honey, but... I never take you anywhere. <laughs> so we're going to get onto that racetrack, and we're going to interview the president here at Pocono Raceway. You're going to learn all about all the fun things to do here. Even if you aren't uh, you know, a fan of the racing itself, it's an entire weekend that they put on here. It's for the kids. It's for the entire family. It's really a destination you could bring. Uh, you could camp here. You could set up shop and just party all weekend here. Party all weekend. Know. So that's what we're going to do. Stay with us because we're going to start the party. Ready? Rev it up, baby. Rev it up. Rev up your Woo! engine. Woo! The girls are already here at Victory Lane. Can you believe it? We're here at Long Pond. We're at Pocono Raceway, and we're with the COO, Nick. So thanks for having the girls here at the racetrack. We're very excited to be here. More excited to get in one of those cars later on. Yeah, some donations going around the track right there. We love it. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Thank you for our hats, too. We have You're the official welcome. Pocono Raceway hats, courtesy of you. And they are numbered. I'm number 18, my age. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> So tell us a little history about the racetrack. Yeah, so my grandfather was uh, one of the original investors in the property and he was into real estate in the area. Uh, it was a spinach farm prior to that and uh, it was established in 1957 and construction took quite some time and they started having races in 1971 and then uh, NASCAR in 1974 and from there it kind of snowballed into two NASCAR races and uh, uh, multiple other entertainment uh, entertainment items that we now host from mud runs to uh, this year we'll be hosting the uh, the Pennsylvania Wing Festival so it used to be the old pencil or Pocono wing off and we're gonna make it a little bigger a little better and opening it up to all of Pennsylvania so we're excited about that and uh, we, we look to host any event that possibly can utilize the property best and uh, obviously our, our big events are the NASCAR races the two NASCAR races one coming up here at the end of July the Pennsylvania 400 and a couple weeks after that we're going to have the ABC Supply 500 which is the IndyCar race um, and then the Wing Festival is uh, August 13th uh, but other than that the track's busy about every day today we're, we're we close the track down for the uh, Red Cross blood drive but every day you come out here you'll find a different car club motorcycle group anything on wheels or, uh, or they can think of putting on track, uh, we usually host it. All right, so you said you grew up at the racetrack, your grandfather was here, and did you ever get behind the wheel and actually become yeah. a racer? Yeah, I dabbled in professional racing for a while. I still do it every, every now and then. Uh, I did a couple races earlier this year, and I tried to do one on the big track here at Pocono, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen this year. But yeah, about once a year, I'll get in the big cars, and uh, a couple times a year, I'll get on the road racing track. Okay, well, behind us, we have, of course, your insignia checker uh, flag grandstand, and above that are the uh, special seating area. Yep. What kind of um, crowds do you draw here? What are the numbers? The crowds are really great. Uh, we got some of the best fans in all of racing here in Pennsylvania, and we draw from about 200-mile radius, so we get a lot in New York, New Jersey, 
uh, Ohio. Uh, we even pull from New England quite a bit, and Canada is very strong for us as well. And we'll get crowds in excess of 75,000 people over the course of the weekend. And uh, um, uh, tickets very reasonable, half price for kids in certain sections, and it can range anywhere from 25 up to $500 for a three-day all-inclusive Skybox ticket. Well, that's great. You know, my nephew Andrew looks forward to these races all the time, so he is included in that 75,000. He's here for every race. That's great. All right, so if someone is watching at home and they've never experienced the three-day weekend, shame how would you them. describe it to them? Oh, shame on me, then I've shame never been here you. either. <laughs> it is a ton of fun. Uh, if you just like hanging out, having a few beverages, if you don't drink, you still have a great time. There's really fun for every age, every type of person, everything that you can think of, we have something for. Uh, kids, there's there's kids interactives all day long. We have a kid zone on the grandstand side. We have a wiffle ball field we set up on the infield. There's a dog park. There's concerts. There's driver interactives. There's anything you could possibly, oh yeah, and then we do some racing too over the course <laughs> of the weekend. That racing thing happens too that weekend, but it really <laughs> is for the entire family yeah. from infants all the way on to, you know, 101 years old. We like sure. to say you can have mom, dad, grandma, and grandpa here. You can bring a bachelor, bachelorette party. You can do guys weekend, girls weekend, or you can just come out and mingle with the other fans. And so you mentioned really about while well, the race is on, how many laps do they actually go in a race? So they, they go by miles. So our, our NASCAR races are 400 miles, 180 laps. And then our IndyCar races is 500 miles, which will be 200 laps. All right, so during the race, people are partying, eating. You have a lot of vendors here with all kinds of food. Yeah, oh my goodness, anything you can think of. Yeah, uh, everything from your nachos, your hot dogs, your spicy hot dogs, your hamburgers, your peppers and onions, it, you name it, it's here. I turkey really legs, giant turkey legs. Oh, I love Oh my those. gosh, from the food to actually the racetrack, I'm so interested in the facts of the actual racetrack. So can you talk about that a little bit? It's a two and a half mile tri-oval, meaning it has three corners. What makes Pocono so unique in the world of motorsports and not just in NASCAR and IndyCar is we're one of the only tracks that has three corners and every corner is a different radius and a different banking. So the dimensions of the corners, all three corners are different and all three straightaways are in different lengths. So it really creates a problem for the crew chiefs trying to set up a car to handle in all three corners. And it's an issue for the driver who's trying to learn three different corners where typically they'll go to another track and one end is just like the other end. So if you do it good on this side, you can do it on this side. Here, it takes you two and a half miles to hit one corner and then you're not going to see that corner for another two and a half miles. So it takes a lot longer for the driver and crews to set the car up for. So if you win this race like Bush did earlier this year, it's a really great achievement. Absolutely. Now, I was recently down in Daytona, mm -hmm. ironically, so I didn't know that the airport is mm -hmm. really on top of the racetrack. So it was really neat to see and then to be here, ironically, today. Are there comparisons with the two tracks? Only in distance. All. We're two and a half miles in okay. length, and Daytona's two and a half miles in length as well, and we both host NASCAR races. That's about where it ends. And really, northeastern Pennsylvania, we're always so proud, the girls are, to show you uh, what we really have in our own backyard. This is yeah. amazing that we have this track right here. There is so much to do. If you're traveling, you could stay right in Pennsylvania and do so many fun things and really support the area. You give back so much. We're going to be talking with the American Red Cross coming up in, in just a bit. But um, like you said, this is more about just racing. You have so many other events that go on here. Yeah, and, and for somebody who's looking to come up and maybe they're only coming for the Sunday feature race, uh, there's so much to do, like you said, in the area. Everything from whitewater rafting, paintball, water parks, uh, the beautiful state parks in this area, waterfalls that you can go to. It's amazing stuff behind the scenes, fishing, uh, biking, canoeing, anything you could possibly think of in the outdoors. Pocono Mountains is the ideal place to do it. The Pocono Mountains, well, we're standing in Victory Lane, as we said, and we're atop the Sunoco uh, logo here where the car actually pulls in after it wins, correct? Yeah, everybody will come in here and the car will orient itself right up, right basically on the Sunoco logo while the crew's up here, beers in hand, and as soon as the driver gets out of the car, he's showered with a little uh, uh, celebration beer shower. So they and get, then they'll all come up here, take some pictures, and do it again with a bottle of champagne. So they get their trophy. The trophy goes here. They get their hats, which That's we right. have. So yep. we are officially a part of the uh, victory lane. That's right. I want to be one of the flaggers. I could do that job. Well, you have to go over there. Just right? over so there. Don't think over there. Just right up in the tower. The flag flag. Yeah. Right up in the, t in the tower. So there are different uh, seating levels. There, That's right. There's um, the general seating. Talk about that. So our seating is a seating at a racetrack is a little different than you would at a baseball or football game. Okay. The higher price seating is actually higher up on the grandstands. Okay. Where at a, at a typical stick and ball sport venue, the higher price seating would be lower down to the field of play. So our 
our lower price seating is at the bottom and we call that our concourse seating and that you can get for uh, anywhere as low as $25 depending on your age group. And then it gradually goes up as you get to the sections. Then you have the covered grandstand section which we call our 300 level. as uh, a covered grandstand seat for $150. On top of that you can get a covered grandstand catered seat which is our terrace club level and that's $250. Then if you really want to make the all in you go up to the skybox level. It's a three day pass. Friday, Saturday, Sunday we take care of all your food, all your beverages. Sign me up. We throw a pit pass in there, a, a program <laughs> and a die cast car. And what you're there for all three days. For? I mean, yeah. if you're coming, you might as well live it up and go all the way to the Terrific top. value. One of the best values in racing. Best view from there. Be incredible view from there. Absolutely. You can see all the way to the water gap. Oh, my and, gosh. Uh, and uh, almost all the way to New Jersey from there. Really? Yes, ma'am. And I'm sure they have day. all the souvenirs, the hats, the shirts, yep, everything yep. that we you We don't have, have the individual trailers anymore that some people have become accustomed to. But now they have a superstore. So it's one big superstore, basically the Walmart of NASCAR merchandise. And you can get all your favorite driver's uh, merchandise in there. And we still have some Pocono Raceway stands to get some of those beautiful hats and uh, shirts that we have here. Okay, so the big part of, of racing. Of, of course, it's exciting to see them going around the track and, and rooting for your, for your favorite racer. But isn't it the truth that, you know, we can't go without seeing an accident, right? Or a you crash. Know, uh, it's kind of like in hockey. They wait for that. They the entertainment for that, uh, portion. The entertainment portion. I don't know yeah. if I'd want to be around for that. But does that happen every race? Well, you, you, it's very rare that a race goes caution free. And okay. it's not necessarily the accidents that you want. What you want is caution flags. Okay. Caution flags will bunch the field up. And if you know anything about Pocono, the front straightaway is the longest and widest front straightaway in all of racing, okay. which creates some unbelievable images and battles going into turn one after the green flag. They'll fan out six and seven cars wide and then kind of have to get back in line before they get to that corner because they're not all going to make it through the corner six or seven wide. So the restarts are incredibly exciting here. Um, they're beating and banging all the way through the corner, all the way around the, for the first lap just to get that position to try to pick up as many spots while the field is bunched up. So we never want to see anybody get hurt. Right. We don't really want to see the accidents. What we want to see is those restarts. Okay. And how about all the racers uh, that come here? I'm sure all the popular ones, do you get to meet them? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, in passing, we get to meet them. Uh, there's a few guys that are friends. and uh, Nice guys? Yeah. Majority of them, very nice. A couple Any of girls. girls? Yeah, we have Danica. Say, Danica Patrick. Danica, 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 Danica Patrick. It should have been Debbie Marquez because <laughs> I wanted to be a race car driver, but because of something you just mentioned, accidents, my dad wouldn't let me. Uh, so Danica got first, but at least we got a D. Yes. How about <laughs> All right, well, I know that we're gonna experience the race uh, car driving in a little bit, um, but talk about, I see that you have um, your arm bandage and we wanna talk about why that's important to you. Yeah, I got to do my, uh, my double red cell donation today here and uh, go into the American Red Cross. I think they get a little more uh, use out of that than a regular blood donation. So I just happen to have a type and I'm eligible uh, to, to participate in that program. And so I've been doing that for a couple years now. Um, again, you can drive your car on, on this event. If, you, if it's too late this year, come back next year. Keep, a, keep an eye out on our websites and our uh, social media sites. And uh, there'll be announcements on when this is going to happen again next year. And for $10, a mere $10 a lap, you can take your personal car out here. You'll see a group that's going to pass us here in a little bit. And 100% of those proceeds go back to the American Red Cross. So encourage as many people to come out and take a spin here. You see they get up to a pretty good speed. Oh my goodness. Before we go to break, um, how long is the racetrack actually open? Like your season, what does it run to? What are the months? Our season is uh, typically from uh, late March, mid to late March. Uh, we'd be pushing it uh, mid-March. Uh, there's still frost in the ground, so we have to wait for the frost to come up out of the ground. Uh, so late March is usually when we open, um, and then we'll go all the way to October. And from that point, we're closed. Uh, the, the racing surface is closed down, but obviously our offices and everybody in the staff is, uh, is hard at work getting ready for the next year. All right. Well, Nick, thank you so much thank for taking you. the time. Appreciate thank you, you for everything. Out. Thank you for all thank the information. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. We're going to head over to the American Red Cross. Janine, are you going to donate blood? We'll see. Welcome back. The girls are revving it up here at Long Pond. We are at the Pocono Raceway, and right now we're going to speak with the American Red Cross representative. Beth, thanks for having us here. We're excited to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming out. We're so excited to have you. 
So there are a lot of activities that go on here at the racetrack. One of the events is that they host is having the American Red Cross. Absolutely. So this is our 11th annual blood drive that we host every summer. Uh, typically, we see about 100 blood donors come out, which is wonderful. And uh, each blood donation can actually help save up to three lives. So it's really important that people come out to give. OK, so what are some of the activities taking place along with that? Because I know the track has something to do with it. Absolutely. So we've actually got our ride for the red going on in which uh, folks can come out and pay $10 per lap. And all of the proceeds of that are going to go to the Pocono chapter, the American Red Cross, to support disaster relief. Are there any ways that people can pre-register to come before their appointment? Well, we actually have a great new program called the Red Cross Rapid Pass, and it allows donors to get on the day of their donation. It has to be a laptop. You can't do it on a mobile device yet, uh, but you can actually read through the health history information um, and plug in, you know, how you're feeling that day, and it really helps save time. It can carve off about 15 minutes of what typically takes about an hour, we say, from start to finish um, of your blood donation time. So it's a great program. We encourage all of our donors to try it and we've received a lot of positive feedback from it. When someone does come, do they need to make an appointment with you? Yes, we absolutely prefer folks uh, to make that appointment in advance. That way we know how many donors to expect. Uh, we have enough equipment and staff to be able to handle the load. Okay, so walk them through once they come to the appointment, what happens? Absolutely, so it's a four-step process. So you arrive, um, you go through a health history reading, they'll check your hemoglobin levels, check your iron levels, uh, then you go and you donate. So the actual process process of donating is only about eight to 10 minutes. So it's not a very long time with the needle in your arm. After you're done, you get to go to the snack table, which is everybody's favorite place, and get some snacks, water, and just hang out until you're ready to go and you feel good enough to, to drive or leave or, or whatever you need to do after the blood drive. I was eyeing up that licorice. It's the pull apart <laughs> kind. It's my favorite, even though I shouldn't eat it. It looks so good. Anyway, got sidetracked there for a second. <laughs> All right. We want to talk about um, the American Red Cross as a whole why it's important to donate. Where do those donations go to? So we meet local hospital needs first. So our local hospital partners get the blood that they need. But the unique thing about the Red Cross is we are part of a national network. So we can get blood to wherever it's needed across the nation. Um, so if someone has a rare blood type out in California and maybe someone in Northeastern Pennsylvania matches that blood type, we can get that blood to them and vice versa. So uh, that's a really unique part about the Red Cross system is that we can get the blood to where it's needed the most. So it's really easy for them to find out when there is gonna be a blood drive and where you're located. Right, so there are several ways you can make an appointment. You can visit us on our website, redcrossblood.org. Type in your zip code at the top there, and it'll pull up a list of all the upcoming blood drives in your area. You can also call us at 1-800-RED-CROSS, or you can download the Red Cross Blood Donor app uh, and make an appointment through the app. And it also has a lot of fun features. You can take selfies while you're giving and share the word with your friends on social media to let them know that, hey, I'm doing a good thing. Why don't you come out and join me? You also had, at least when I first gave, you had these little buttons and stickers if it was your first time. I'm donating yeah. blood. That was cute. Was <laughs> you get a I fun remembered. sticker, you get a <laughs> snack. What's not to love? How about that? A little okay. blood drop. And you also had an award for someone who had donated a lot of blood. That was the right. most that you've ever seen. Yeah, a 30 gallon donor I wow. saw this past fall. Um, a gentleman that started giving when he was in his early 20s and continued throughout his life. And I mean, just think about how many lives uh, those blood donations could potentially save. So we say to people, you know, you can give every 56 days. So just make it a regular habit. Come give blood every Every, you know, about every 56 days or so, um, and then you can pretty much give about five times a year. And just to um, clarify some of the questions that people have about the blood as well, from the time that you actually draw the blood, how long does it take with the process till it's checked sure. and cross-matched and whatever, well, until it's able to be used? Yeah, well, it varies, but we say that the shelf life is typically 42 days. So from the time that you donate the blood, there's about a 42-day window to where we have to get it to where it's uh, to where it's going, to the hospital that it needs to go to, to the patient it needs to get to. So there is a window of time, and so that's why, you know, of course, blood donations are, are constantly needed, um, you know, every single day. Right, so no matter how much blood you do get today at any drive, every 42 days, you're more or less starting from scratch. Exactly. All right, exactly. so you're always sort of in a blood emergency. Right. It's always right. good to give blood. And you're the first people there when there's a natural disaster. You know, everybody turns to the Red Cross for floods, for fires, for everything. So you supply more than just blood. It's a great organization. We do encourage everyone to always donate to the American Red Cross. If you can't give blood, you can donate money, you can donate your time. Be a volunteer. We're always looking for dedicated folks that, you know, maybe have their time to give and they want to help be a volunteer, whether it's at a blood drive or responding to disasters as well. 
Well, Janine, I think we came up here today. We are at the racetrack. We want to take advantage of being able to get on the track. So we're going to give a donation to the Red Cross. And I think I have my little mascot here. We're going to get Thank in the car you. and take a lap. Would you racing. like to come? I'd love to come. Let's <laughs> <All> go. <right. laughs> Let's do it. Rev those engines. Off to the races. Okay, Janine, so we just got out of the race car. Another one of my dreams come true. Another thing off the bucket list. Oh, how exciting is it. that? We have bones and arm broken. This is awesome. And we're standing at the Richard Petty 200 Victory Circle right down on the track. We have our official hats. I mean, what else? I have my mascot. The fox, and the fox is indigenous to this area. That's how they picked him. He's going to be four this year and probably is going to stay oh, four forever. Birthday. You know, just like us. You pick an age and that's where you stay. How about <laughs> it? Well, it was a great time here. I hope everyone learned a lot about Pocono and what we have right here in northeastern Pennsylvania. As we always say, Pennsylvania, the best state ever. The best state ever. And as you see, we have some race cars coming down. Some of the people here are taking advantage of the drive around the racetrack. And as they say, and they're off. See you next time on the girls.